Hi everyone, this is Glenda Ganzon and welcome to my Human Anatomy and Physiology class. And for today's lesson, I'm going to introduce to you the cellular level of organization. Kick. Cells are considered the smallest structures capable of maintaining life and reproducing, composed of all living things, from single-celled plants to multi-billion-celled animals. The human body, which is made up of numerous cells, begins as a single, newly fertilized cell. Almost all human cells are microscopic in size. To give you an idea how small a cell is, one average size adult body, according to one estimate, consists of 100 trillion cells. Ideas about cell structure have changed considerably over the years. Early biologists saw cells as simple, membranous sacs containing fluid and a few floating particles. Today's biologists know that cells are infinitely more complex than this. There are many different types, sizes, and shapes of cells in the body. For descriptive purposes, uh, the concept of generalized cell is introduced. It includes features from all cells or all cell types. The cell also is the smallest part to which an organism can be reduced that it still retains the characteristic of life, which is the basic unit of life. Cells also produce and secrete various molecules that provide protection and support of the body. For example, bone cells produce a mineralized material to make the bone a hard tissue that protects vital organs and supports the weight of the body. Movement also of the body occurs because of the molecules located within the specific cells such as muscle cells. Cells also produce and receive chemical and electrical signals that allow them to communicate with one another. For example, the nerve cells communicate with one another and with muscle cells to cause muscle cells to contract. The chemical reactions that occur within cells are collectively referred to as cell metabolism. Energy released during metabolism is used for cell activities such as the synthesis of the new molecules, muscle also or muscle contraction also and heat production. Each cell also contains a copy of the genetic information of the individual. Specialized cells, sperm cells, and oocytes transmit the genetic information to the next generation. In addition, the structural and functional characteristics of different types of cells are determined by the nature of the proteins present. Cells of various types have different functions because cell structure and function are closely related. It is apparent that a cell that is very thin is not well suited for a protective function. Bone cells, for example, do not have an appropriate structure for nerve impulse conduction. Just as there are many cell types, there are varied cell functions. The generalized cell functions include movement of substances across the cell membrane, cell division to make a new cells, and also protein synthesis. A cell consists of three parts, the cell membrane, the nucleus, and between the two, the cytoplasm. Within the cytoplasm lie intricate arrangement of fine fibers and hundreds or even thousands of minuscule but distinct structures called organelles. Every human being is developed from a single fertilized egg cell into complex organism containing trillions of cells that you see when you look in a mirror. During this developmental process, undifferentiated cells differentiate and become specialized in their structure and function. And these different cell types from specialized tissues that work in concert to perform all the functions necessary for the living organism, cellular and developmental biologists study how the continued division of a single cell 
leads to such complexity and differentiation. Consider the difference between a structural cells in the skin and nerve cell. A structural skin cell may be shaped like a flat plate, which uh, we call it as squamous, and live only for a short time before it is shed and replaced again. Packed tightly into rows and sheets, the squamous skin cells provide a protective barrier for the cells and tissues that lie beneath. A nerve cell, on the other hand, on may shape something like a star, sending out long processes up to a meter in length and may live for the entire lifetime of the organism. With their long winding appendages, nerve cells can communicate with one another and with other type of body cells and send rapid signals that inform the organism about the environment and allow it to interact with that environment. These differences illustrate one very important theme that is consistent at all organizational levels of biology. The form of a structure is optimally suited to perform particular functions assigned to that structure. Always keep this in mind as I tour you inside the cell and you will be introduced to the various types of cells in the body. A primary responsibility of each cell is to contribute to homeostasis. So what is again a homeostasis? It is the term used in biology that refers to the dynamic state of balance within parameters that are compatible with life. For example, living cells require water-based environment to survive in and there are various physical or anatomical and physiological mechanisms that keep all of the trillions of living cells in the human body moist. So this is one aspect of homeostasis. When a particular parameter such as blood pressure or blood oxygen content moves far enough out of homeostasis, which is generally becoming too high or too low, illness or disease and sometimes death inevitably results. The concept of a cell started with microscopic observation of dead cork tissue by a scientist who is Robert Hooke in 1665 and without realizing their function or importance, Hooke coined the term cell based on the resemblance of a small subdivision in the court to the rooms that monks inhabited called cells. About 10 years later, Anton van Leeuwenhoek became the first person to observe living and moving cells in the or under the microscope and in the century that followed, the theory that cells represented the basic unit of life would develop. And this tiny fluid field sucks house components responsible for the thousand of biochemical reactions necessary for an organism to grow and survive. In this lesson, you will be able to learn about the major components and functions of a prototypical generalized cell and discover some of the different types of cells in the human body. So this is just an introduction to the cellular level of organization. I will be teaching you more in my coming videos. And if you have any question about this lesson for today, please write it in the comment section down below and I'll be glad to answer them all. And once again, I would like to thank you all for watching this video and for listening to my discussion. So until my next video about cells, bye for now!